big Sunday night matchup. This is a heck of a good football game, we hope, coming up. We're trying to uh, take it one day at a time in preparation, put together a, a week that gives us a chance against a team that's just high flying. Um, Philadelphia is doing everything well. Um, they're, just, they're very well balanced, and, and uh, their numbers are in the right places, turnovers, running the football, um, explosive plays, quarterback efficiency, all that stuff. Everything is, is really lining up great, and they're, they're having a uh, fantastic year. So we're going to have to have a great week in prep and uh, to give us a chance. What steps forward have you seen Carson in year two that maybe were in more command? He just seems more in command of everything. You know, he's, uh, he was good last year. I, I, I said some... Uh, some stuff about him last time around, you know, after we had seen him in, in preparation for him, I thought he was really going to be a great player. He's just doing everything. He's, uh, you know, he's protecting the football well. He's making big plays. Uh, they're very explosive. He's got a rushing average. He's running the football. They've got a running game with him as well. Uh, he's really tough in the pocket, scrambles uh, effectively, and has been really creative and resourceful with big plays. You know, they have a ton of explosive plays, and he's right in the middle of most of that. Their defense has been really good against the run, too. What what's kind of stands out about how they've done that? Well, it's, they're, they're just really aggressive. At the, the front play is excellent. Um, they don't, you know, they're not going to fool you. They're going to line up and play football and come after you. Um, they've been ahead so much in these games. You know, they've, they've had the great opportunity of running the ball at the end and, and keeping you from wanting to run the ball because you've got to catch up. And they, they, the score differentials are crazy. Um, so it's all played, you know, in, into their strength, and, and they look terrific. On the other side of that battle, their running game's really going, and you guys have been stopping the run. Just what, what do you see out of their run game? Well, it, it, there's good diversity to it, but what jumps out is the explosive plays. They're leading the NFL in explosive runs, I believe, or they're right up there. And, uh, you know, look, look at some of the averages. Um, they're, they're guys, they're just across the board, they're all effective. And they use a lot of guys. They, they, they roll a bunch of guys through there. So um, the scheme is good. The quarterback threat is part of it. But uh, they're, they're blocking in the principles of what they're doing is, is just working out great for them. And they're complementing it really well with the play action off of it. So it's very difficult. Is it, is it as simple as, as they use Blunt more in between the tackles and Ajay more on the outside? Or no, they... no, no, it's not like that. No, there, there may be a little bit of a tendency to some numbers go a little bit uh, that way, but not, not where they're excluding the guys from either, either you know, aspect of their style. They've got a real nice inside game, and, and they put the ball on the edge with a commitment, too. They're trying to do that. So uh, all of their guys seem to, to work through it. Your teams have always had better records as the season goes on, November, December, both in college and pros. What goes I mean, there, other than just preaching the importance of the finish, what goes into having teams peak at the right time? Um, I, I do think it has a lot to do with how you prepare your guys to finish and get them ready to, to do it and uh, with a real discipline and a mentality. I think that's part of it. And then, uh, you know, good fortune is another part of it. Good quarterback is another part of it. Um, but I, I think it's a commitment uh, in, to the discipline that it takes to, you know, do stuff right and when it comes to crunch time. And uh, so it shows up in games and it shows up in seasons if you're fortunate and hopefully you know we we're almost at the fourth quarter turn here you know, this is the last game of it and uh, we'll see you know it's going to be a, a great way to jump into the fourth quarter playing Philadelphia what did what does stood out to you most about Bobby Wagner just the way obviously he's, he's been really good for a long time but this year is there anything different or is he is he doing it I think I think he's um more more precise in his pass drops. I mean, he, he's worked hard at that stuff, and, and he's in throwing lanes. Uh, his his anticipation is probably it is the best it's been in terms of breaking back up on stuff, throwing underneath him. Um, uh, last game was was a great example of that. There's a number of plays, uh, keeping short passes to minimum gains that, that he's great at. Uh, but he, he's you know he's been terrific for years now, and that's why he keeps throwing these numbers up there. And the scheme stayed the same, and he's a master of it. And he you know he totally owns what we're doing and the adjustments, and and, and he anticipates beautifully because of all that. Pete, uh, during the broadcast of the Niners game, Rondé Barber said that Russell Wilson was the most indispensable player in the league right now. Do you feel that way? I don't know. I don't know. That's good. I like Rondé. It was a good thought. <laughs> You know, the way he's carrying the offense. You know, yeah, yeah, I don't know how you can carry it much more, you know, numbers-wise. And uh, he's having a fantastic football season and doing marvelous stuff. And it's great to see him, you know, with good fortune in the health and all that. We can see the difference, and it's so obvious between this year and last year. Um, and, he's, and he had a great offseason, and it's showing up, you know, in his conditioning throughout the year. 
but yeah, I, I don't know if we're, you know, we would be in a different mode without him for sure. And uh, he's a fantastic player. They're, they're... The way that he's able to keep plays alive, you can't see that in the numbers, but just how, how much value does that add in terms of just, you know? Well, let me, let me state it from the other side of it. When you have players that can do, a quarterback that can do that, it changes everything. Um, you know, you hear the guys on the broadcast talk about how, you know, you get the first play and then you get the second play. Well, sometimes these guys give you third plays, you know, and, and Russell's been able to do that. Uh, it might look like it's going to be a scramble where he's going to throw it and then he takes off and runs for 15 or 18 yards or something like that, you know, and, it's just as hard as it can get because you can you know you can structure your defense to play normal stuff, and then the play breaks down, and then you're not quite sure if it's going to be like a QB draw or is it going to be a, a winds up being a sprint out or it winds up being like a naked or a boot, you know, um, and, the, and the defenders have to start all over again, and uh, so it's it's just as hard as, as it could possibly be. You know, I've always said that about the, when we have our opponents that are like that. It's been going on for a while, but is that sustainable? Are you okay with? <coughs> Russell yeah, the thing that, that you know comes to mind is you know you can't do that forever, or you can't do that all season long. Well, yeah, you can. <laughs> you stay healthy, you know. Russell has uh, uh, has great awareness about taking care of himself. You know, I, I hope that the, the calls continue to show they protect him, they protect the quarterbacks. Um, he got hit three times last week; they were all questionable, you know. And, and um, when he he should have been safer than he was kept by the you know. And so I'm hoping that that will continue to work in just fairly and in. in, in uh, and then he just keeps making great choices, and, and we got to keep protecting him. We're getting better in our protection, um, without question. And the guys are feeling him more, and they know where he is and where he's going. And, and it takes some time, and, and uh, all of that works together. We certainly don't want him running the ball and getting hit, and, and you know he, you're not seeing him run a bunch of lead plays and stuff. Um, but uh, he, it really goes back to Russell's awareness. He knows how to do this, and I'm counting on it. I got that? mad at him one time in the game last week. You know, I, I I jumped him. You know, what are you doing? You know, and he was. I thought he tried too hard on a play, and of course he's saying, "Well, I was going for the sticks." You know, yeah, right. Well, we have we have small differences on that, and usually he does it exactly right. But I got after him this, uh, last week. Did you send those three hits to the league <laughs> and ask for an next? Of course. Did, and you, were, did you did you get a response? Yeah, we did. <laughs> Coach, can he, can he get better at this stage of his career? Or is it more about maintaining it? Oh, sure. Yeah, there's no question. There's so much to this position. There's so much growth that continues to be out there. Uh, yeah, he, he will. You know, you guys compare him to, like, uh, what, what Tom Brady's playing like and what Aaron's playing like. And I don't know how many years Aaron's been playing, but he's about six years ahead of him, you know. Can you even imagine that he's maybe – how long has Aaron played? Who knows off, off the hand. So, so he's got a whole other career already, you know, and uh, I can't even imagine the awareness uh, that Russell will have when he's put, you know, in his ninth year, eighth year, tenth year in there. And and Tom Brady's got, you know, three times as much, you know. So um, there's a lot to grow, and and uh, and we'll keep challenging him and keep working him, and, and and he'll keep doing, he'll keep competing to get better. It's it's a really exciting uh, thought, you know, that, you know, how much he can improve. Mike Davis looks like he'll make it back this week. We'll find out. Yeah, we're gonna. He'll practice today, and uh, we'll get him out there and see how he's going. We're anxious to see if he if he can fit back in. Um, so I can't tell you until he comes back after a couple of days. What Won't know until the weekend. What he brought to you for that half two weeks ago that you liked to see. Um, he's, he showed a real spark. Um, Reading the, the, the line of scrimmage, uh, he sh showed some creativity that got him some extra space, you know, and uh, um, a couple runs. Um, and he and he couldn't have been more aggressive in the opportunity that he had, you know, when he got to you know go after some guys with the football. So um, and he can catch it, you know. So all of that, he's very well rounded and and uh, he looked good. And so, you know, as we're trying to figure it out and, and maximize our, our, the running game opportunities, we've, we're going to keep looking to make sure we're getting better. And so the competition remains; it's on still. Is uh, Luke Wilson able to go for you today? What, what's his status? No, not yet. He's got to get through this next stage here, but he looks really good and he feels really good, so he's got a real good chance. But he won't. We won't know until uh, possibly tomorrow, Friday for sure. We'll know which one way or the other. I know, I know you're ready to go over there. For Mike Davis, when you talk about the creativity and getting the extra yards, how is that different after you've already kind of got to where you're supposed to be on the field? It's not creativity behind the line of scrimmage. It's after you've already gotten through that. That first um, I, you know, I don't know that, that it's, it's limited to that. I, I think it's uh, the awareness that the guys have. They sometimes they can the awareness that they can see how the defense is aligned. They can already start to anticipate where the ball is going to go. Then when it does, if they've done that accurately, then they have that 
little jump on making the cuts they have to make. Then it can happen after the fact when you know somebody shows up in the hole, uh, the way a linebacker you know scrapes or something like that. They play off of that. The opportunities in the open field, you know, the choices that they make to lower their shoulder or to straight arm or to cut back and all that. I mean, there's so many things going on in, in such a split second for those guys that I think every aspect of it, from the time they're lined up, they're already starting to take in information and, and, and see if they can utilize it to our advantage, you know? And so that's why it's, it's so, so much of this is instincts and you have to see guys and it's taken us some time to get our guys to show, you know, who they are and what they're capable of doing. And so um, we're, we're still working at it. You mentioned anticipation with Mike Davis and then earlier with Bobby Wagner. How do you encourage that anticipation? Because sometimes that's not the way the play is lined up. Um, you know, when, when guys have, have been through the system long enough and they really have the command of the system, then uh, and, they, and they've mastered the expectations of the technique and the principle and the reads, then they can take themselves to a point where they can start to improvise and they can innovate the, with their thoughts and their, the, what they're seeing. And that's, that's what you see in, 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 in our, like a guy like Bobby who has been in our system so long, he now has the freedom to make the plays that he sees. And so uh, he knows that he'll take his shots at times and he'll do it masterfully because he knows what he's up against. He can, he can measure the opportunity and he can sense when it's time to go. So, um, you know, that's, that's a, a mark that separates players from, you know, young guys coming along and trying to figure it out. They're not quite freed up yet to go ahead and, and take shots. So how do we do it, you asked? We encourage him. We, and, and by trusting him and trusting the preparation and the process that, you know, he'll make the right choices. And uh, for the most part, you know, he's, he's, he's got a great batting average, you know, he's going to hit it. So, um, and that's when you, when you know you, you, you're making progress with your guys is when you're at that level of trust and, and, and relationship where you can cut guys loose. And that's where the real, you know, the real beautiful stuff happens out there. You guys played them uh, 13 months ago, last November 1st. Is any of that relevant? Do you, do you go back and look at that game? Sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm sure they do too. You know, we, we, you always want to see what the matchups look like and the, the common players and stuff like that. Um, so yes, the answer is yes. In the second, uh, injuries in secondary. How much are you asking now out of your D line that maybe you didn't ask for? We, it doesn't really measure that way for us that we would change anything. You know, we we have. Um, I understand why you'd ask that, but. Uh, you know, we have our system, we have our principles, and these guys have been trained to do as they do. And, and so there, there may be calls to pressure a little bit more, a little bit less, or whatever. There's some, some of that. But uh, for the most part, the guys got to go out there and try to play their technique that fits into the scheme as well as they can. And, uh, and then we'll try to use guys, you know, in particular ways to help them maximize their strengths. You know, that, that we always are in, in the process of doing that. So we might place rushers or blitzers, you know, in positions to have more ops. And uh, we might play a little bit more man-to-man -man or a little bit more zone, you know, depending on what, what uh, the choices are. But it's not really like, okay, now you guys got to go do this. Because if they could do that, it'd be easy, you know, <laughs> just sack them. You know, it doesn't work quite that way. Does it put more on Bobby's plate in terms of communication and everybody lined up, not having Sherman in camp? Um, a certain, to a certain extent, yeah, yeah, it does, and, and he knows that, and he's, you know, he's had to step up uh, where he might have heard the communication on the back end happen, and he might look over his shoulder and make sure things are right. Um, in particular, with uh, with Bradley, you know, with he, uh, Bobby and Earl and, and KJ, they're all trying to get the right conversation going so we can maximize the identification and the communications and stuff like that. They're working at that. Bringing Rodney Co up, just what have you seen from him? In a uh, he's really stout. He's been uh, when we've had him, um, he's shown you know real physicality that that uh, we think it makes him gives him a chance to be maybe a little bit unique in his, in his what he adds. So we're going to take a look at that and see what what happens. Cliff, did he have surgery today? He had surgery yesterday. As as far as we've heard, everything went really well, um, and so we're just you know waiting for him to get back. Pete, in general, is there one or two common denominators in the way Doug Peterson, some of his play designs that makes their offense so effective? That's a that's a really good question. Uh, they they um, they're on it right now. You know, they they've found their rhythm and uh, they're maximum maximizing their running game with all the different running backs. So that means that the choices that they're making for the calls and the schemes that fit their people and their in their linemen is really on it and. Uh, what um, what Carson is really good at is he he's really good at at utilizing the system of the run pass stuff. He does a really nice job with that stuff he did in, in college, and they've picked out things I'm sure from his background that, that he's comfortable with. That's accelerated you know his command of what's going on. So there's a lot of things they're hitting on. Um, they've 
he's also found a really good way to use the, the variety of receivers. You know, Ertz is a really good player in their offense, and they, they're really maximizing his, uh, you know, his style and all of that. So they've, they've made a lot of really right choices. He's doing a fantastic job, so it makes it really hard. How's uh, Ode Ibushi come along with his shoulder? Um, he's making progress, but he's um, uh, nothing. No, there's no change right now at this point. What, if anything, have you noticed about for Michael Bennett with Cliff Averill not being in there? And has it changed at all how offenses have blocked him or how things No, I haven't seen any change in that. Um, nothing specific uh, at this time. You know, we're still mo we move our guys around so much, it's hard to find out and really set your scheme for Mike. Um, but Mike has been really effective. He continues to have a, he's having a fantastic season. Um, <laughs> you would think, you know, <clears throat> we would – you know, that might not happen because Cliff went out, but our guys have picked up well. Frank's done well. Um, uh, Marcus Smith has done well, you know, to, to give us our edge rushes and all. So, so far, you know, but we miss Cliff's numbers, you know, all those forced fumbles that he's so famous for and all that. That's, you can never get enough of that. How big a season is it for Bennett with the foot he's been dealing with and playing through that? Yeah, it's pretty remarkable now that he's gone, you know, you know documented, uh, you know, plantar fascia injury that he's made it through this. And uh, he has not been able to practice very much because of it, but uh, it's been a terrific, uh, really a ter terrific challenge for him that he's really done a great job with. Regarding uh, Malik McDowell, did he have a health setback? Was there a new development, or is he not well, he's, At this point, he's really just he's out for the season, and it's, that's, that's basically what it is. You know, he's out. With Cam and just the leader that he is and the guy he is and how much people gravitate towards him, how important is it to have him still with the team even though he's not playing? No, I think it's, it's, he's quite valuable. Um, he just has had such a great voice and such a great presence that um, having him around is, is significant. Um, I, I think I mentioned that he was significant in this game in the locker room with our guys and on the sidelines with our guys, really competing the whole time and couldn't ask for more. Could you give a quick update on Deion Jordan? Yeah, um, he's he's working. He's trying to get back this week. Um, he had a little shoulder neck thing, you know, the gum stingers that uh, he's coming back from. Um, we're going to take it day by day. He's got a chance to play this week. Your margin of error is a little smaller without players like Chancellor and Sherman, I guess. Uh, how much more important does that make special teams in the return game with Lockett? Yeah, so that's a good point. It, it, it all fits together. It all is important. And um, that's why we have to be really well-rounded. We have to be really complete and, and – uh, uh, we can't have, you know, voided areas that aren't really attended to. We've got to be on it. That's why the, the penalty thing is so important. That's why taking care of the football is so important. And the field position that we get in John Ryan is really, really valuable to us and how accurate and effective he has been. So it, it is a big deal. And, and then to the returns, you could see how much of a factor it was when we got Tyler going uh, two weeks ago, you know, and, and uh, we need that when we can get it. Last week they kicked the ball away from him the whole time. You know, they kicked the ball short on the punt, so we didn't have a chance. Um, Still helps us. It helps field position, you know. But uh, it, yeah, that's a really good point. Anything else? Thank you.